soft. The snow, the snow is softly falling. The air is still in the silence of my room. I hear, I hear your voice softly calling. Just to hold the hands I love on this winter's night with you. The smoke, smoke is rising in the shadows overhead. My glass, my glass is almost empty. I read, I read again between the lines upon each page. The words, the words of love you sent me. If I, if I could know within my heart that, that you were lonely too, I would, I would be happy just to Good morning and welcome to my channel. My name is Shannon. This is Whiskey and Wool Knitters Life Series Season 2, Vlogmas 1. I will be doing a uh, little bit more of an intro in a little bit. I just wanted to um, share a little angst, <laughs> a little Vlogmas angst with you right now. Um, it is Sunday. I think it's the 26th. It is the Sunday after Thanksgiving here in the U.S. and I i um, getting ready to do Vlogmas, so I have so much to do. I was away. I went up to Maine to see my son and daughter-in-law and my granddaughter. They, um, if you haven't kept up with me this year, they were in Texas last year and moved to Maine for um, basically for a year and a half, and then who knows where they'll go, back to Texas or stay in Maine. We're not sure, but we'll see. Anyway, they're there now for this holiday season, and I spent Thanksgiving with them. It was so fun. You probably saw a clip, or you will see a clip, of um, me and my granddaughter making cookies and my son. Oh, anyway, it was a wonderful trip, but I sort of feel behind the eight ball for Vlogmas. I am doing some prep of the living room right now, getting some holiday decor out, and going through my advents, which I'm going to show you soon. I'm going to show you all of that, all of the house prep, um, you know, clips of it anyway, so you get the general idea. And there might be a little knitting catch up later on in this Vlogmas one. We'll see. Um, but yeah. Quick tour of my advents. I got, this is a Scotland based dyer of natural dyed and natural fibers. It is, she called it a healing calendar. I bought the 12 day healing calendar. I just wanted to show this beautiful packaging. I did open it already just to take a peek, but there, so there was a sticker here that I loosened. And then when you open it inside, there's all these gorgeous things. So there's this um, tea, loose tea. A beautiful card that says, it's so pretty, um, an envelope, which I'm not sure when I opened that, but it's beautifully stamped, uh, and then instructions, and here's the full skein, which I assume is the last day. Um, there's this, not sure what that is. It doesn't have a day on it. I'll have to read the instructions. And then also this, and then there are the mini skeins. I bought the 12 day. So she's labeled them alternating days. So to indicate when you should open them. So I'll be figuring that out, um, later today. Just put everything back for now. Beautiful, right? Gorgeous, gorgeous packaging. I also got Inglenook Fibers 
12 day, it's five ounces and it's supposed to go together. So um, inspired by the um, image here, I got sparkle. I'm so excited. This is going to be fun. But inside that big bag is a bunch of little bags. So I'll be sorting that out. My big yarn calendar, my big day calendar is from Granuli. Uh, it is 24 days. The inspiration this time around is Gothic Library. And inside are all the individually wrapped packages and a full skin. So I'll be figuring out that, where that's going to go. And I got from Green Goat Ranch a six day? Yeah, I think it's a six day. I forget what the ounces are, but it's pretty substantial. And this is a also fiber of one type that goes together. So I'll be able to spin this as one project. I think this is total 10 or 12 ounces. So that's a sweater, large project quantity for me. I have one other fiber calendar coming. It is um, from Akara Yarns and it is also a 12 day that goes together. And last, I have this whiskey advent, a 24 day. This is from Drinks by the Dram. And yeah, Explorer's Edition. I have no idea what's going to be in there. And then I also got a Gen, Great British Gen calendar, also 24 days. I actually thought I bought two 12 days, which would have been perfect. But I ended up with two 24 days. I don't know what happened. Anyway, I do have one other non-knitting calendar. I have a candle advent that's on its way. So it should be here in the next few days. Um, so we have a few days to get that situated. So I'll show you how I end up setting these up. And, oh, you're also going to see, I set my tree up already, which you saw, um, but I'm going to be decorating that today too. morning. It's been a while since I filmed my campus walk. It's Monday. I think it's the 28th of November. Yeah. So yeah, I'm heading to work. It's very mild today. I don't even have a, a shawl on, but it's beautiful. Look at the everything. Yeah. So I'll go into today for a few hours and then head home. 
and work out and chill and knit and maybe do my intro for this vlog. I'm not sure. I'll see you soon. Okay, a little advent update. I got my 12 days from Akara, so that's lined up there. So I think what I'm gonna do is open the two 12 day advents um, that are fiber. I'm gonna do one through 12 of one and then one through 12 of the other across the 24 days. And wait, there's more. I also got this beautiful advent from Wing in a Prayer Farm. I don't know if you saw her call for it, but it is so gorgeous. I totally forgot I ordered it. Um, and I th think that's Tammy right there <laughs> feeding her sheep. And I got the treats version that has um, little, little things in them, little packets, little candies and things from local to her makers. So I'm excited for that. I have to figure out where to hang this currently. It is on a door, <laughs> which will not stay there for long. Um, I think I need to get an over the door hanger and maybe put this over this door here, which would be nice, or um, maybe over my closet door in my bedroom, we'll see. Wait, there's one more thing that came that I didn't know was Over coming. here are my wax and wool 12 day countdown calend uh, calendar for um, of candles that are of the holiday season and holiday inspired. And while I'm here, you can take a quick look at my Whoville tree. This is, or my bedroom. Um, this is a tree that I've had for years. I got it from Urban Outfitter. I don't even know, like more than a decade ago. But for a long time, it was the only tree I had because my apartment was little. Um, but now I have a bigger space, so it works but yeah um, i've got uh the sweater knit down to um where you join and you're working the fronts and backs and one you know one pass i had originally chosen this yarn right here for um for the for the cuffs and trim so this has a um it's made out of the baby surrey from Ching fibers. It's very fuzzy yarn. It knits like a DK, as if it's a DK weight for me. Uh, and you use a fingering weight yarn for the neck trim and cuff trim and waistband trim. It's a bomber jacket style. That was the one that I originally chose for it. What I don't like so well is all the variation and how much white there is in it. I mean, though, looking at it now, it's it's really tonally, it's the right color because this has a lot of, it's got rainbow, it's rainbow speckles, but it is primarily orange or like um, rust or pink, pink, shades of pink, rust and orange, which this is doing very well. And it even has little splashes of gold, which is pretty and purple. Um, this may end up being the winner, but I think I might be better off with something that's a little more solid. So I pulled out, I pulled out a bunch of potentials um, that, you know, may or may not make the, make the cut here. Um, this is a fairly solid red with flecks of black, which would tie really nicely. It's kind of the reverse of what the fabric is, where it's black with flecks of color red with flecks of black. I actually like that quite a lot. I think that works. That might be the winner. Let's keep going though. I know that's my highest. I did pull out this very bright pink. I don't think it really works. I think, I think it would be okay. I don't think it is like a good, good match. So I'm gonna put that aside. I also pulled out this kind of modeled lavender which also you know it would work for this for the person who maybe wanted not as beaming bright a color on the cuffs and and such you may be thinking why don't i just use black i don't have any black <laughs> i could buy black yes i don't have any solid black i have a variegated black that has flecks of gray and white in it and i also have a rainbow black I might cake the rainbow black and see how that looks because I have no plans for that yarn. This is pretty, but I, I think it, you know, it 
looking at it here, it looks pretty good. <laughs> Do we like that better than this? Maybe. Maybe. The person I'm gifting this to does not like orange all that much though. So I'm trying to be mindful of that. That's why I didn't veer into orange. I also have a little dab of this. I'm not sure it's enough, but I think I could probably make it work. It is sport weight. This is from La Bienna May. It's her calcifer color, and I used it most recently in my Rhinebeck Alpen Glow, non-Rhinebeck, I guess, sweater. And it looks pretty good. Um, it has like the bright pink, and it has orange, and it has red. Um, I think it would be pretty good. What I could do is go get the Alpen Glow and just kind of lay it underneath so you'd get an idea of what that would knit up as and I would have that idea as well. Let's see though. I'm I'm getting I'm getting a better idea. I think I need to go cake the black and then come back and check. I also have this solid dark red. This is a old stranded dye works color. I think it's a one of a kind. She calls it paint box or he calls it paint box. Um yeah, this is this has been around a while. Um, yeah, you can tell because Stranded Jude's bases are now named what they're what they are instead of these um, name made up names that were stand-ins for what they are. And this is an MCN, which is fine for this project. I actually don't mind that at all. I think that would be a really good sort of toned down um, way. It, it's a it's a bluish red so it picks up the purples the shades of purple and such but okay I'm running out of light but I'm gonna go cake the black and hopefully there'll be enough light that I can look at this <laughs> this is kind of a no-brainer I knew when I was caking it I was like oh my god I'm so silly like <laughs> this is perfect because it has all the same colors they're a little brighter a little more keyed up than these but it'll bring out the bright pops of pinks and greens and blue and gold and orange will bring out the pops here um, a little bit more. It'll, it'll make you notice those a little more. It does also have white in it, but just little, these are little dabs. Those are going to be like one stitch, maybe two in some of the bigger strips there. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. I'm so glad I did this because I probably would have still been trying to make one of these work. I mean, these wouldn't be bad, but I think that's the winner. <laughs> it's Vlogmas, hooray! Welcome to Vlogmas season. Um, it is actually November 28th, so it is the first week. I am putting out a vlog per week, one vlog per week. My aim was to try to put them, post them on Sundays. So I, but I think I'm kind of in a bind these first two weeks in terms of like next week and I'm going away. So I'll have a lot of footage, I think from that. I'm going out to the Hamptons. It's gorgeous out there at Christmas time and it still feels like country. It's a country setting. So there's a lot of like small businesses and stuff like that, which is really my jam. Um, so yeah, but and this one will go out on like Wednesday of this week, I think. Um, I am just filming this session right now to tell you about my knitting because it's been a couple weeks since you've seen my um, my knitting projects. And oh my God, the um, holiday anxiety is in full bloom over here. I am like about like, could I fit in like knitting another hat or <laughs> should I try to make yet another pair of socks? <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to see. I'm going to see how it goes. Um, but yeah, it's first things first. You had asked me about my son's anchor sweater. Some One of my viewers had said, I hope you'll show us it on him. So I have a picture of my son in his anchor sweater. It was, it actually turned out to be a little bit short. I had made the yoke 12 inches and the body um, tw uh, 16 inches, so that was 28 inches. And so 30 inches was right. I think I griped about the pattern last time 
about it being for a very tall man, but 30 inches turned out to be what he needed. So I ended up ripping out the rib and I spent most of Thanksgiving weekend re-knitting the bottom, like it, all my knitting time went to re-knitting the bottom. And I ended up, he needed short rows across the back because the back hiked up. I had put short rows for the back neck, but I probably should have put them put in, now I know when I make a sweater for him again, to put in um, short rows after I split for the sleeves. Uh, if it's a top down. Um, yeah, so I ended up putting in about an inch and a half of short rows because I figured it would be better if the back was a little longer rather than it being, you know, a little on the short side. And he said the longer the better. So, and then I ended up in adding a whole, another inch all around. And I guess he technically needed like a 29 inch um, length sweater from the, sh from the neck to the bottom or from the shoulder, the point of the shoulder to the bottom, which seems about right. He's about 5'8", um, and yeah, he's adorable. I just, oh, yeah, I was so happy. He was so excited because he apparently his office is very cold. So he's looking forward to wearing it to his office. Um, yeah, I wish I had time to make him another sweater <laughs> for Christmas because I would totally do it, but I don't. Uh, anyway, um, other knitting, so I was saying that my panic over knitting for Christmas gifts has set in, and I just realized my computer is about to die, which is capturing the footage, so I'm just going to power through, and I'll show you that at the end, or maybe in a different clip, um, I'll insert it in here and all that, but let's move on to the socks. I think I showed you um, a half-finished object last time, and this time around, I don't have that much more done. I think I'd started the toe last time. These need to get off my needles. I need to finish them and get them off my needles. I still have one more pair of socks to make for Christmas. Um, so I need to power through. And with, um, I wanna make a couple hats for Julie, my granddaughter. So yeah, this is part of my panic. This has been running around with me, but I really need to make time in the evening to just finish this. Um, I think I'm about five rows away from starting the uh, increases for the instep and then the heel and all of that. So yeah, that's gotta get done because that's a gift. This Saucy Surrey Bomber Jacket that is a pattern by me is also a gift for my daughter-in-law and I have done pretty well. I finished most of the body. I'm working on the um, rib trim now probably saw a clip earlier um, of me trying to figure out the ribbing color. So um, yeah, I'm going with this black rib that has neon speckles. Um, I think it's going to be good with this sort of rainbow speckled black from Ching Fibers. This is, I'm knitting this out of Melted Baby Surrey um, by Ching Fibers in the colorway Black Hair. I wish I wasn't in the middle of the row so I could show you a little better, but I'm gonna show you anyway. This jacket has um, a drop shoulder and it has a baseball style collar and it has a baseball jacket style, like bomber jacket style front where it has a zipper. So it has a set in zipper. But the other thing about it is that it has this, maybe I, it's, I'm gonna show it to you upside down just cause it's easier. It has this tab that you do on each side of the front that sandwiches the zipper. So it's a tab made out of, you end up knitting like a six inch tab out of the Surrey. Then as you knit the rib bottom, you pick up one stitch along this edge. Um, and then when you get to the very bottom, you fold the whole thing in half with the ribbing and you do a three needle bind off on the inside to tack, tack that all down. If that sounded confusing, I have <laughs> tutorials where I explain exactly how to do it on my channel. So you could always watch those um, if you wanna make the pattern. Uh, it's so funny, like this pattern I released in the spring of 2020, just after the pandemic started and it had been in testing and stuff for a couple months. And um, I, there was a few things that I don't remember as I'm reading the directions. I was like, oh, oh, okay. And there were things that weren't necessarily intuitive. Um, so I didn't remember these tabs, but as soon as I 
saw the instructions were saying that to do them, I was like, oh, right, right. Um, but yeah, I, I ended up making this slightly longer than the pattern was written for. The pattern is written for an 18 inch, um, separating zipper and I'm going to go with a 20 inch separating zipper for this one because when I got to I'm making a size bigger one size bigger than I did for myself and when I got to the place where it should have been 18 inches I was like that doesn't look long enough so I just kept knitting till it looked good enough and it ended up that it's going to be a 20 inch so about two inches longer inch and a half longer than if I have to cut the zipper down that's fine that's totally doable with this um with this pattern, I'm just like watching the power. If this suddenly cuts out and then you see me back again in different clothes, you'll know what happened. <laughs> so this has to get done. I'm making great progress on it. I've spent a lot of time knitting on it. It's probably been the thing that I've knit on the most since I finished the surgery on the anchor sweater. Uh, again, pattern, pattern by me. Um, not a lot of pattern uh, project pages, but I think most of them are mine, <laughs> but it was well tested. Um, I don't, you know, push my testers to, I ask them to make project pages and I'll push them to, if they don't, if they do, they do, if they don't, they don't, it's fine. Um, but do know that also the patterns, project pages are no indication of sales. <laughs> Let me just put it that way, because my most sold pattern, <laughs> I don't think has any project pages, but I've sold like dozens and dozens of it. Anyway, it's my stocking pattern, if you're wondering. I do have a stocking pattern, and you'll see the stockings at some point in this blog. Okay, I'm going to talk about Funfetti now. So um, I'm going to take a minute just to run over and grab the body. But before I do that, I wanted to just show you I've started the sleeve. It's a bottom-up sleeve <laughs> with a sleeve cap. Um, so you knit 2x2 two two rib for... Uh, three inches and then you start the funfetti pattern which is this sort of checkered almost looks like a houndstooth in a way um, so yeah haven't worked too much on this because I have been I've sort of set it aside pretty much set it aside to gift knit um, but I'll get back to it I hope to finish it I'd love to have it soon it's it looks like such an amazing sweater Actually, what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna insert a clip that I have filmed um, of it, Martha in it, because Martha's wearing it right now and I think you'll get a good look at it. And one of the things that I noticed about it, it's kind of a sweatshirt vibe I get from this, the silhouette of this, but there's a lot of extra ease up under up under the arms. Um, and, but you know, it, it worked just fine. So that again, bottom up sweater, I'm knitting it out of Lamb and Kid um, Todd base, which is, uh, a yak cashmere. It's so soft. I, I am curious to find out how it, how it wears, but I'm doing my, the body of the sweater is these three colors, uh, anorak, chili, and K, and then the orange cuffs and collar are <laughs> captain. <laughs> um, anyway, it's all in the description box if you didn't catch what I said, and I probably put it on screen too. So that is, you know, kind of on hold, as is this next one. This pattern is called Ward, and it is by uh, Sloan Rosenthal. She has her own yarn company called Hudson and West Co. I've never tried her yarn, but I saw the pattern, and it was everything I wanted um, in this sweater. Uh, I've done a little, I think I've made a little progress. I don't remember where it was at. Maybe I hadn't even, maybe I didn't have anything. I don't recall. Um, but it is, uh, about, it's another bottom up. So it's about this far along. This is the, that's the middle. It's a cable sweater. So there's cables on either side of this garter stitch panel. So the garter stitch panel is like dead center. And then there's a um, textured stitch that you do along the sides and the sleeves are all a textured knit. I love this. This is uh, Winsley Worsted by Lobby and MA in the colorway Lush. It is a vivid bright green, which on screen right now is not showing nearly as vivid or bright as it actually is in person. 
it's beautiful. It's like my perfect shade of green, I would say. Um, again, I know it moves fast when I work on it. The cables aren't too demanding. They, uh, one of them you're, you're doing some sort of twist every other row. So you get to, re there's a rest row. Um, and then the other one you're only twisting twice every like eight or 10 rows. So, um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty easy to work on, but it's going to sit aside until I'm done with these Christmas knits because besides the two, so these socks, the, um, I didn't say that this yarn is by, uh, Chromatic Yarns and it's her sturdy DK base in, uh, which is 100% Superwash Blue Face Luster in the colorway Cold Resistance, which is such a cool name for socks, um, for a yarn that you use for socks or hats or accessories or anything, really. And after those are done, I have another pair to make for one more person um, in my life who I would like to gift socks to. And after, besides, I'll coincide, like alongside those, I have an, a sweater that I want to make for Julie. And then I thought about it and I was like, should I, there's a hat I want to make for someone. There's a headband I want to make for someone else. Those are quick projects, but you know, the deadlines are coming and I need to figure this stuff out, uh, at least make sure I have the yarn. So, um, a headband I might make out of cashmere. So I may have to buy some cashmere cause I have nothing in cashmere in my stash. Um, but yeah, panic has set in. How are you doing? Are you also panicking about Christmas knits? Maybe you don't knit at all for people. <laughs> That's smart. <laughs> Very smart. <sighs> uh, I will update you next week with my how I progressed on some of these projects. And I really am looking forward to taking you along for my weekend. I hope you enjoyed this vlogmas and I think there's probably some footage at the end here. I had a bunch of wildlife footage um, that I probably did not stick in all into the front um, and other little dribs and drabs of my day. You saw my decorating, my advents. I really went all out for the advents, but you know what? I'm a single mother with adult kids who, you know, they get me nice things, but they don't, you know, they don't go, they're not oozing money and they, you know, they're just at that stage in their life where they're still building their own foundations and I don't want them to buy me extravagant gifts. So I do the extravagant gift buying for myself, which is why I have all of these advents. Uh, yeah, I didn't think I went as out as much out this year as I did last year, but I really, I did. I actually think I, oh yeah, I did more. I didn't even know it was possible <laughs> to do more. Uh, I don't, I definitely don't have as much yarn coming in this year as I did last year. Um, but I have more fiber. So, but that's fine because that's at it. That scratches two itches spinning and then yarn for knitting. So it's a win-win. <laughs> anyway, I hope you're enjoying your first week of December and I look forward to sharing more of this holiday season with you and all of the holiday activities um, because, you know, it seems like there's a lot more to do this year than there has been for the past two years. So I hope it's a little more interesting than the last couple ones and I just want you to know I appreciate you so much and I love reading your comments and I love hearing about what's going on with you so please feel free to share in the comments down below and like and subscribe if you don't want to miss the next vlogmas and I'll see you in a week or so bye Jesus Christ